sponsored by Tech Reload UK. Check out the purchasing links in the description below. Hello, today I'm going to have a look at this Otma console table in black. But before I show you this, you need to like my video and subscribe. So now it's okay? There's just one more thing you need to do and that is to click on the bell. Uh, so that you get a notification when a new video comes out. I hope it's okay. Perfect. The box dimensions are 133 centimeters by 51 and a half centimeters by 15 centimeters. It comes flat packed and when it's built, it will look something like this. The weight dimensions on the box is a net weight of 20 kilos and a gross weight of 23 kilos. And the shipping weight was actually 21.8 kilos. It's made in Taiwan. There's a little safety label there which says you need a team of two people to lift this up. And it is quite heavy if you try to move this around by yourself as I did. The item code is G0010301. On the rear, we can easily open this up, but you can't use a box cutter, which means I'm not going to be able to use my pizza cutter which I normally use or maybe I can because I can adjust it slightly and that's probably because there's some wood behind here which we actually need with the tape cut I should now be able to open this up and we can see we've got some polystyrene protection the top sheet is about a centimeter thick the instructions we'll need a screwdriver a hammer I didn't realize I need a hammer we can see the dimensions it's 120.1 centimeters by 39.9 centimeters and 75.8 centimeters high the difficulty of building this together is 3 out of 5 so it's medium and I'm guessing the difficulty is because of its weight and it requires two people to move this around we can see some other furnitures that they do some instructions here on how to assemble it care and maintenance instructions parts list two squiggly bits well, actually we've got four squiggly bits two flat panels and there's a third flat panel there's another two small bits and some more small bits and some even smaller bits the hardware list we've got ten of these what are used to join the wood together so it'll screw in on one end and then hook onto the other end these are the actual hooks 12 dowels 24 hex screws four feet and then we've got one of these which I'm not sure what it is there's the assembly instructions Instructions, more instructions and then we've got a QR code you scan it and it'll take you to the website so towards the right hand side is another polystyrene bit here two more here one good thing I've noticed is these parts are actually labeled so they will match what's on the drawing and we can see it's made out of chipboard it's veneered and painted black the holes are already pre drilled these ones don't go all the way through and where we've got the other screw holes these are countersunk these are the G pieces. Next we've got these curly ones. And are these labelled? Yes, they are labelled. So this is the E piece. There's two of those. These other curly pieces are the D pieces. There's two of those. I can get rid of this polystyrene bit. Next there's a thin, I'm not sure what this is made out of, but it's got air pockets inside it. Two smaller bits, these are labelled F. Some more packaging box of hardware and inside the box of hardware we can see these dowel which are used for joining the two bits of wood together these are the locking nuts where you're screwing on one end and then locking on the other end usually these are already fixed in but here they're not so these are labeled one and two the dowels are labeled three we've got the allen key which was for the hex screws and there's 12 of those in here and that is labelled A2. This weird thing, which I have no idea what that's for, is some kind of wedge. These are stickers that you use to cover up any of the holes, possibly left by these screws. And finally, we got four pin parts, and those are labelled A1, and these are the plastic feet. These two parts are labelled A3 and A4. Now we come to the larger pieces. We've got two large pieces labelled H. These are long and small. We've got a large piece and that one is labelled C. Another protective material. The next piece is quite thick. This one looks like it's an inch thick. In fact, it's made of two pieces and it's hollow on the inside. And this one is labelled B, the middle shelf. And if we remove the final layer of protection, we have another piece which is an inch thick. 
but again it's made of two pieces and the bottom piece is hollowed out. This one would be the top of the console table and this one is labelled A. Looking closely at this bottle we can see there's some white thin material on there and that appears to be glue like PVA glue or wood glue. So if I open this up the bottle is quite squeezy and there should be white liquid in here which there is so that's the glue and this is what you would use to put inside where the dabbles are to make sure they don't come apart these are the dabbles and these will go in the holes in the wood the first part i'll need is part c and that was the large board which was the single piece high we can see there's holes at the top holes on the sides that will go this way around the first part of the assembly will require these dowels glued into the holes part c requires eight pieces to be attached next we'll need parts g and h H were the long pieces, G were the shorter versions of H. These will make a box. G has two holes at the bottom. Those will go on the dowels on part C. And then we've got holes here and here, which is gonna be used for connecting H together. H requires these metal locking screws. These will go on here. It's important to line where the hole is on the wood so for example on this piece I put the hole on this side because that's where the hole is on here when this screws across puts the screw head into this narrower section which then locks the screw in place that can just press in like that same for the side pieces and same for this end piece These can just be pressed in with your hand, you don't need a tool. The same will be done on the other H piece. These end pieces do have a plus and a minus side and a direction in which way to turn to lock it in place. Basically, the direction of the arrow indicates the direction of locking this up. Now because H requires one of these two also be installed, we can put these in and these will screw in and a screwdriver is required to actually drive this in. stop when it reaches the thread and I'll do the same on this side. We also need to do the same on the two G pieces. And the same with the other G piece. With all these metal parts in, we can now assemble G and H together. They will go in like this, and then on the inside, we would use this metal locking screw to lock the screw in position. It will lock on this part here. It will screw in clockwise, and once it's in, it won't come out anymore. You can do the same on this side. Now, if it doesn't go in like that, that's because this hole isn't lined up properly. So now that it's lined up, it'll go in all the way and then I can tighten this. And then finally, the other G piece. Clockwise to tighten it. This will now fit onto piece C, which is the bottom bit. Like that. We need to tighten up the two locking clips. Now that's fully locked in. Step two requires part A, and we need to pour in the four metal screws. Now these would go on the inner holes, which are the smaller ones. There's two in each corner. This one is for the screw, this one is for the dowel. Section 3 requires parts D, E and F to be connected to each other. The difference between D and E is that they have the holes on the inside, so they're a mirror image of each other. They're only connected on the top and the bottom is connected elsewhere. These countersunk holes are for the outside and later they'll be covered with stickers. F 
only has one long end covered. We'll need to put the locking clips in here, which will then connect to part A using these holes. So that will go this way round. We'll need two of these hex screws. And using the included Allen key, we can screw this in. Before it's fully tightened, I'll put the other one in because this needs to be lined up properly. Now that's in properly, I can tighten up the bottom one. And the same for side D, which will go this way around. That's quite rigid. And then I need to repeat this step again for the other side with pieces D, E and F. These leg pieces are made out of MDF, which is a different material to the other pieces. MDF is a bit more rigid and we're able to handle more strength or load put on them since the weight would be put on these legs. And the same with attaching part D. Part 4 requires us to connect these two legs that we've just made in part 3 to part B and they will be attached on these holes in the middle. Part B was the middle shelf which was made of two pieces with the bottom piece hollowed out. This has two holes on each side. Now this is probably where you need two people, one to hold a leg, the other person to hold the table. But if you put it on its side, you should be able to do this without any other person. So that would go this way around. It curves inwards towards the shelf and we'll need to put these hex screws in. Better to do one screw at a time until you can line it up. And then you can also line up the other one. Once lined up, they'll just screw in all the way. I'm going to do the other side next and then I can flip it over to do the screws on the reverse side. Now carefully lifting it up because it's only secured on one side, I can then rotate it again and then put the four screws in on this side. And then finally screws on this side. Part 5 of the instructions requires us to attach this what we've just built in part 4 to the section that we built in part 1 which had parts H, G and C connected. The way this is installed is the unfinished side will be at the bottom and we've got the shelf part on the top. These will be attached on the legs on parts D and E on each side. Again I'll be doing one side on both sides and then flip it over to do the reverse side. Now with these four screws in, I can flip this over to the other side and put the other four screws in. This is what it looks like so far. Final part of step five is to put these pins inside. Now hopefully I could just push these in because it is chipboard and these will just go in. If it was MDF then I would need to use a hammer. The instructions does say to use a hammer. Or you could just use a screwdriver. The final step is to connect what we've done in part five to board A, which is the top piece shown in part two. First we'll need to connect the four remaining dowels. And we also have four of these remaining which needs to go into part F with the holes facing upwards.
and then finally part A will fit on the top which already has the metal screws on there. The tricky part is lining up the dowels and the metal pins and the final step is to lock the metal pins with the screwdriver. There's two on this side so there's one here and one here. And then finally two on the other side. And that is the installation complete. To finish it off we've got these decorative stickers. We have 24 of these. We'll just peel this off and we can stick this on any of the screw holes. Such as here. And that will hide the screw hole. We can also remove the labels which indicates which piece is for. And that is everything complete. Fully assembled, the console table is 120 centimeters by 40 centimeters by 76 and a half centimeters tall. If you've liked this video and found anything useful, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't done already, please subscribe and click on the bell for more notifications. And could you also like my Facebook page? And I'll see you next time.